Thank you, Trooper Steve. New developments overnight on the Russian attack against Ukraine video appearing to show a Russian plane shot down by Ukrainian forces hours ago. It comes as Russian troops move into the city, the capital of Kyiv, just hours after President Biden announced another round of sanctions. Mark Lehman begins our team coverage this morning. And Mark, at this point, the U.S. does not plan to send troops into Ukraine. The president has made it clear that U.S. forces will not fight in Ukraine, but thousands of troops are positioned in nearby NATO member countries. Some Ukrainians are now fleeing to those countries as a full-scale attack continues. Air raid sirens sounding in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv, followed by reports of new explosions. World leaders bracing for the city to fall as Russian forces have been moving in. This is the uh, opening salvo of a massive uh, invasion, and we see this continuing uh, and uh, threatening Kyiv and threatening other major cities in Ukraine. Ukraine's president claiming civilians are being targeted in the invasion, he says, has killed at least 137 Ukrainians. Countries across the world condemning the attacks, but Russian President Vladimir Putin is pressing ahead despite calls from diplomats for an immediate end to hostilities. I repeat my appeal from last night to President Putin. Stop the military operation. Bring the troops back to Russia. President Biden, meanwhile, followed through on a promise to impose crushing economic sanctions, including blocking four major Russian banks from the U.S. financial system. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. Even with the stricter sanctions, there are doubts it will deter Putin's actions, and many say they didn't go far enough. Today, the United Nations Security Council is expected to vote on a resolution condemning Russia, but the proposal is expected to be vetoed by Moscow. Justin? Thank you, Mark. Meantime, Russian police are cracking down on anti-war protests within their own country. Officers have arrested at least 1,700 demonstrators across more than 50 cities, and Online anti-war petitions in Russia have gotten more than 150,000 signatures. And as the crisis unfolds overseas, it's having an impact here in central Florida. Members of the local Ukrainian community gathering to pray for family and friends still in the country. Last night's vigil coming ahead of a weekend-long rally starting today. And Ezzy Castro continues our live team coverage in Apopka now. Ezzy, the annual event is typically a festival. Yes, this is usually a time where the Ukrainian community comes together to celebrate culture with music and art, but that's all changing this weekend. A three-day Ukrainian festival planned for this weekend in Apopka will now turn into a rally and demonstration in light of the crisis overseas. We're just going to have like a rally and demonstration and you know we're going to say a few words time to time and sing like Ukrainian anthem and all kinds of Ukrainian patriotic songs and things like that. Vasil Boychuk is organizing the event and says the festival is usually a joyous event that celebrates culture. But now the Ukrainian community will take the opportunity to call for peace. Last night, dozens gathered at Lake Yola in downtown Orlando, waving the Ukrainian flag and chanting glory to Ukrainian heroes. We are very, we very appreciate the support from the world that we are getting. But again, telling you the truth, today sanctions is not enough. I think uh, we as Americans should do much more and uh, impose more strict, uh, more strict san sanctions against Russia. Now, the Ukrainian festival is taking place here at the Apopka Amphitheater, and we also learned that there is a Russian festival scheduled for Sunday in Seminole County. Now, the organizer there says they, too, are changing their plans in support of Ukraine. Live in Apopka, Ezzy Castro, getting results in 6. Thank you, Ezzy. Meantime, Russian space officials say U.S. sanctions in response to the attack on Ukraine could seriously damage cooperation on the International Space Station. Right now, four NASA astronauts, two Russian cosmonauts, and a European astronaut are on board the ISS. President Biden says some of the sanctions against Russia target the country's aerospace industry. But Russian officials warn a lack of cooperation could lead to disaster because Russia and the U.S. each control critical aspects of the space station. NASA says for now, normal operations continue. 